Cars. A lot of people have them. Chances are, if you have one, it's powered by a gasoline engine. I'm Hayden. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the chemistry behind gasoline car engines. Alright, what I've got here is a four-stroke, six-cylinder engine. And I'm going to kind of show you how it works. So, to start off up here, what you see here is valves. There's two valves per each cylinder. Your intake valve and your exhaust valve. Now, I'm going to turn this engine over here and kind of show you how they work. So, I start turning this over and you see this valve lift up. What's happening here is your first stroke. Your first stroke is your intake stroke. What's happening is the piston in the cylinder is moving down and this valve, your intake valve, is opening up, allowing a gas mixture with air from your carburetor into your cylinder. Now, that's closed back down again. What happens next is your compression stroke. Your cylinder has the piston inside of it and the piston has moved all the way down. At the start of the compression stroke, your cylinder is moving back up and it's compressing that gas air mixture at the top of the cylinder. Your spark plug, <clears throat> which looks like this and goes in this hole, then ignites it and sets it off, starting your power stroke. During your power stroke, your cylinder, uh, your piston in your cylinder is pushed back down again and that applies the power to the crankshaft. I'm going to turn over the engine here a little bit and catch us up to our last stroke, which is the exhaust stroke. During our exhaust stroke, you'll see this valve start to lift. There it goes, it's lifted up all the way. What's happening is your piston in your cylinder is moving back up again. Now we have a lot of exhaust, which is what's left over from the explosion, uh, left up in our cylinder. As this uh, piston moves back up in the cylinder, it pushes all that exhaust out through the hole that this valve is opening up. That sends it down, out your exhaust, and out to the back of your car. After this, this valve closes back down again, and your intake valve opens back up, starting the whole cycle all over. Alright, this video is titled The Chemistry of a Gasoline Car Engine, so let's talk about some chemistry. First off, let's talk about gasoline. Gasoline is generally what you use for fuel in a gasoline engine. However, you can use pure ethanol or even propane. Gasoline, or petrol if you're British, is a petroleum-based substance, and it consists mostly of organic compounds. However, even though most of those compounds are organic, it may contain up to at least 15 hazardous chemicals. Now, there are several variants in gasoline. Generally, a big variant you might find in today's gasoline is the amount of ethanol in it. Now, certain cars handle better, different amounts of ethanol better. So, generally, you might want to check with your vehicle what might be the best to use. Me, I just use the cheapest. However, there is another huge difference you can find in gasoline. Most of the, car, most of the gasoline you'll find today at pumps, well, all of it, is unleaded. Unleaded gasoline does not have lead in it, like leaded gasoline. Leaded gasoline was a more common gasoline at one point in time. In fact, that was all that was made. Often, when older engines that were made for leaded gasoline had to start using unleaded gasoline, they would wear out faster because there was less lubrication in unleaded gasoline that is provided by lead. Leaded gasoline has a formula of C8H18, which means it has eight carbons and 18 hydrogens. Unleaded gasoline has a formula of C7H16, seven carbons and 16 hydrogens. Though gasoline is certainly very important to make your engine run, your engine isn't made of gasoline. Generally, it's made out of cast iron, at least the block and all the other hard parts. Cast iron is very dense, very strong, very heavy, and very brittle. Cast iron is an iron that is cast, which means that it's poured into trays that are shaped in a certain shape, and then it cools down and it stays in that shape. It cannot really be shaped like steel, and this is really good because cast iron needs to be very brittle and very strong. Um, in an engine, you have a lot of explosions going on. So every time, I was showing you the strokes before, every time you go through a full cycle in an engine, there's another explosion. And these engines can last up to 300,000 miles maybe. In a diesel engine, you might go twice that much. So cast iron has to be very strong, and it is. 
That's generally why cast iron is used in an engine. Hey, thanks very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more awesome experiments or more awesome projects, go over to www.chemistryislife.com or head over to Beale Science. There's some pretty awesome experiments on there. Thanks again. I'll see you later.